Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check it out. It may be Sunday, but we got it to go over today. Eastgate, there's a lot more to know. And I tell you, the United States and the globe are headed towards an inflection point. We'll explain. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Right now, $1.1 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is up 0.2%. Good morning, everyone. 26600 plus for Bitcoin. 1595 and change for Ethereum right now. Tether market cap is $83.2 billion plus. XRP is $0.51 cents at the number five spot, up 0.2% on the 24-hour, up 27 on the seven-day. Let's look at this. It's private equity from Link2 access to private investment and you know what i used to think that private investing was just for the ultra wealthy but all you have to do is go and sign up and check it out for yourself over 304,000 registered users and growing daily do not miss your opportunity all you have to do is sign up to get started click the link to my sponsor underneath well here we go. Years ago, I remember both Bitcoin Maxis and Link Marines calling XRP a banker's poop coin. Today, Bitcoin loves BlackRock and Link is bootlicking every banker in sight at Cybos while bragging about following what banks want. This is true. This is 100% true. The white paper of Bitcoin everyone made fun of XRP for working with inside of the financial system. But yet they all claim that Bitcoin is about anti-bank, anti-establishment, but yet they're all just jumping up and down for the Black Rocks and the Vanguards and the Van X and everybody else to take an ETF for a spot Bitcoin ETF out. Well, let me tell you this, because I've talked about this plenty before. Be careful, Bitcoin maxis. If Bitcoin doesn't find a real working use case utility, to support its demand, in other words, outside of being revered as digital gold, and I'm exposed to Bitcoin too, all the banksters have to do after taking large positions is dump after the retail follows them, and voila, it will crash to the floor. They will ride you on the way up, and they will short you on the way down. Don't get played Real use case utility will be the next bull market. Not bull run, bull market. So I'm not saying Bitcoin won't go up. Sure it can. And I hope everybody makes a lot of money. But be very careful because it will be the assets that provide real utility that will survive. Now with that being said, let's get into this. Oh boy, Mike Novogratz. Maybe this is why Mikey blocked old Riz. But you know what? Take a look at this. And I had a roommate from college, uh, a guy named Joe Lubin, oh. who was one of the key guys in building the Ethereum project. And at this point, Ethereum had, had just launched. And I called him and uh, I said, Joe, can I come to your office and you can give me a tutorial on like what I own and, and really let's think through, should I keep this stuff, should I buy more? And I went over to Bushwick in Brooklyn. This would have been January of last year, 2016. And I expected to see Joe, a dog and one assistant. And I saw 30 dynamic young people crammed in a, in a, in a, in a Bushwick warehouse, coding, uh, talking on the phone, making plans for this revolution. Uh, and then all of a sudden he pulled up video screens and there were people in other countries and he already had 40 employees. Uh, at this point, Ethereum was about 85 cents. And, you know, macro guys are instinctive. Uh, my instinct was, damn, I want to buy a chunk of this company. And literally, right then I was like, what does it cost to run this company per year? If I give you 10 million bucks, how much would it help? And as we started talking about a deal, uh, he said, you know, it's going to take me a while to to figure out exactly what the company looks like because one of the unique things about this culture is it's distributed everything. Distributed trust, distributed ownership. 
And so there were lots of sub companies in that ecosystem and it was a bit of a spaghetti map of ownership. And so I was leaving to India and he said, you know what, give me a month, come back and, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about it. And at least learn from trading. When you know something's good, buy something. And so I ended up buying a bunch of ethers when they were, you know, call it $1, uh, went away to India on a, on a trip, came back and they were already trading five or six dollars. And at that point, the company consensus didn't need my capital anymore. I didn't need your capital anymore. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, big shot bragging about participated in the unregistered Ethereum initial coin offering. Where is Gary Gensler at on this, right? Look, all we want is a level playing field. Right? That's all we're interested in here. Now, then we see this. And we've talked about this for years since ETHgate was broke open by Digital Asset Investor. And shout out to all the Twitter sleuths who have come out since then. Blockchain and crypto was designed to remove the middleman and banks so JP Morgan positioned themselves in Ethereum and purchased in a big disguised whales to try and take over the space and attack the competition. That's what happened here, right? There's no revolution. This is an attempt at a monopoly and a takeover to try to get sole clarity for Ethereum while bogging down what they obviously knew was the biggest competition in line here. This is a reminder, and we all need to know this because with Steven Nereyov uh, coming back out now or coming out now and telling us he's got the map He's got the list of all the disguised whales and so much more. And look, and I've not met with this guy, but I mean, you could see that there is something happening. And we know John Deaton's talked to him and seen some receipts, right? So listen to this and see how everything changed. Now, remember that Nancy Wotost was formerly from the SEC. So she knows all too well about what's going on here. And you, it's clear to see from this that when they came up with submitting a safe harbor memo to Bill Hinman and others, that it was for the whole crypto space. But what ended up happening was Ethereum was the only one that got that free pass. Take a listen. What's interesting is I don't think Ether is decentralized. I think it's fully functional, but I don't think it's decentralized. But the chair, you know, the division director said it's decentralized. So, hey, look at the metrics for Ether. And, hey, you do a little better than that, hey. Then why is it Ripple? Yeah, and I wonder if they, had, they would have said that three years back. I mean, now they came back and said Ether is not, you know, it's not a security. But, you know, it's now. How about three years back? Would they have the same oh, There's no question. Ether, or Ethereum violated the law in the SEC's view. <laughs> there you have it. That's a former SEC person right there. Shout out to Nancy Wotas. They violated the law, period. And nothing has happened. And we know it's much worse than that, right? Because they also have worked to hold down Ripple. You know... Steve Nureyev here says, uh, no idea. He told me he wanted to implement smart contracts on Bitcoin, talking about Vitalik Buterin. The developers didn't want it. I spoke to him about Ripple, but that was because I had met with Ripple folks and used them as an example of how a company should be operating in the space. <laughs> he goes on to say, Ripple has been following him since day one. The Ethereum camp always knew that Ripple and XRP were the tech threat that they couldn't compete with. So they chose to go to ETHgate route and bog Ripple down with a lawsuit, media campaign, shorting XRP, while allowing Ethereum a free pass with the Hinman test, which is not a valid test. I've always agreed with John Deaton that this case was a weapon, but one thing that has always stood out, though, how did they know to sue Ripple over XRP when there was just shy of a thousand cryptos at the time? Stephen Naryoff, if you can answer, we would love your feedback. There's no question about that. We will keep you in tune to that if it does. But I tell you, to be clear, Fred Rispoli says attorney client privilege means that there's an executed engagement agreement between John Deaton and Stephen Nureyev 
Some express disappointment at John's announcement, but you really need to consider the next level implications here. Very big things to come. I think uh, Fred Rispoli and Yassine Mubarak got it right here. This means Stephen Nureyev has retained the legal services of John Deaton. A lawsuit or legal filing by John on behalf of Stephen might come soon. This would be better than any legal drama you watch on TV. Get your popcorn ready. That's exactly right. And you better because I have a feeling there's a lot more to come here. And I tell you, you want to think about the level of corruption involved in this. When Stephen Nureyev has to talk about the idea of having a dead man switch. It can send instructions or documents to whomever you want such love, such as loved ones, companies, law enforcement agencies, news outlets, independent journalists, lawyers, turn on a website with documents like crypto law. <laughs> Are you hearing this? Eatgate, it is at the level of corruption to where this man had been thrown in a van by the FBI, the weaponization of government agencies. He had all of his charges reversed, brought him out, got himself out of jail, dismissed. Right? When the level of corruption is so big, you have to have a dead man switch? This isn't just about crypto, ladies and gentlemen. This much I can tell you that. This is about what this is. Now, we can see the national debt going crazy. We know that everybody knows that there's a storm coming. And you know what? I think that opportunity, whenever that storm comes, and I know people want to focus on the fact that this chart has changed. There's a G7 illustration, a BRICS GDP to gold ratio as well, right? There's USA, USA Treasury dollars being shown for 2025. The only thing I can say is, is this is a promising site. It's a .org site. It is not run by the government. And I know that because I got the answer from the people that run this site. I'm grateful for I'm sharing these things, but these things are being shown because they choose to showcase these items. So although I think the numbers are probably valid, I'm sure I'm just saying these things that are being showcased are not being showcased by the government. Right. So keep that in mind when you look at this chart, although these numbers appear to be very accurate to the debt clock. So but the point I want to make here is, is that the monopoly that Ethereum was after that I believe JP Morgan and the CCP are involved in behind Ethereum was because that crypto itself is going to be very small. The Fed explores asset tokenization impact on financial stability and they go into it tokenizing real world assets. It, it, it's begun to surge and the Federal Reserve has released a comprehensive port delving into asset tokenization, risk weighted assets, real world assets. We know it's all coming, right? There is more evidence of it coming as well. And I say tokenization of traditional markets derivatives will make crypto market look like a tchotchke trinket market. Don't believe it. It's still true. Take a listen to this very quick clip into it. Uh, why does the security services industry have to go digital, do you think? If you allow, I would, uh, I would turn the question around. Why uh, has the industry not gone digital so far? Because mm -hmm. if you look at other industries, in my views, um, they have done their digital journey already. Take the music industry, for example, where the core product, a song, is an MP3 right now. And the financial service... And there you go. Now we're talking. And it's even streaming nowadays. So uh, we have made the analogy in comparison to the music industry and how it was flipped on its head by the digital revolution and digitizing music. The music industry thumbed its nose at digitization and look where it is now. It has been really flipped on its head and it will never be the same again, right? That moment is coming for real world tokenization and this right here, right? Risk weighted asset token. It's real world assets. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're going to. And I believe when it gets right down to it, we're going to have to see some kind of moment where it's a collapse or a huge correction in the market. And they will use that opportunity to reset and get everyone onto distributed ledger technology and tokenization. This is why ETHgate is so big. This is why it's so important. It's not just about the fact that they were trying to shut everyone else in the space out and cause problems for Ripple and XRP. That is a big enough issue on its own and certainly its own has its own merit. 
But what we're really talking about here is the opportunity to create a monopoly for Ethereum so no one else could do it. Think of the billions of dollars of tokenized projects that have been launched like an assembly line off of Ethereum since the fake free pass that has been given and still not acknowledged by the SEC. This is why I say also there is an inflection point coming, a convergence. But it's not solely about XRP. It's about the entire traditional markets crashing, real world assets being tokenized on distributed ledger technology. When people focus on price, they're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. This is what we're really focused on. It's everything that we still can't see open to the public, that it's all coming. We've seen enough evidence to know that they're not working towards all of this so they can just let it sit on the floor. This is happening. Don't get caught by setting some watermark or timeline for yourself that's just something you've picked that is going to let you down. All of what you don't see under the water here illustrated is going to make its way to the surface. And when it does, it will be because it is serving to digitize and tokenize the real world assets out here in the traditional markets like derivatives. That is what we're waiting for. And when that moment gets here, crypto will truly look like a tchotchke market. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.